slightly different video appearance today because I'm using some different camera software so that I can lock off the um, colour temperature but leave the exposure on. And the reason for that is I'm going to be testing some neons because when I put up the previous video about the neon glow plugs, uh, it someone mentioned about uh, neon versus LEDs and I thought that would be quite interesting to get some orange LEDs. In this case the 5mm straw hat LEDs, 4.8mm to be precise, but uh, just generic ones from China and uh, use them in place of the neon, put them in series of the neons and uh, see what the intensity is. And I thought, well, in that case, the the difference between the, the neon voltage and the LED voltage is the LED voltage will be 2 volts and the neon will be dropping about 50. So I thought, why don't we just even the score a bit? And I got one of these little LED lamp kits that you can buy off eBay and populate with your own LEDs. It's basically just the people, instead of making the lamps up themselves, they sell it as a kit uh, and sell it for the same price as the complete lamp. But it's quite useful for people like us because we can like make experimental lamps. So what I've done here is I've populated it entirely with the same orange LEDs and the combined forward voltage, because these uh, little PCBs are designed for dual voltage, they tend to actually have parallel pairs of LEDs. So there's about, best part of about 40, LEDs-ish on this, uh, but in pairs. So there's 20 pairs and that comes to about 40 volts. So um, that that will bring it closer, although still not quite up to the same uh, voltage as an, an eon when in its struck state. So that'll be interesting to see how this compares. So let's start the experiment by trying just the neons on their own. So we've got a neon, a 100k resistor and another neon. So I'm just going to close this down, power it up and I'm going to turn the bench light off and the, the camera is making that look so much brighter than it is but that's okay um, they're nice and bright they're quite pleasant nice even color uh, let's uh, now experiment by turning the power off turn the power off is a good option here and I'm going to remove this neon and that wire and put the LEDs in now, to match the, the neons, uh, because it's AC, I've actually got these uh, LEDs wired in reverse parallel, so there will be a bit of shimmer backwards and forwards visible in them. So let's see if I can uh, get this in. Let's uh, put it like this. I've got this raised in a box just to actually bring it closer to the, the viewing, uh, well, to make it look bigger, fundamentally, since the iPad doesn't have zoom. So let's get that wire on there. And I may have to put diffusion in front of this just for this to be visible. I've not tried it, so there's only one way to find out, and that's to try it. So let's uh, line this up in the middle, roughly, and power it up again. Okay, so what's this going to be like? I think the neon is winning there. So do I have the diffusion material? Yeah, the neon's winning. Right, okay, but that is two dinky little LEDs. What about if we even the score a little bit? by changing the 2 volt 4 volt LEDs for something that matches the neon more. So I'm going to desolder those, and I'm going to solder this in instead. I've added a bit of direct fire here to convert it to DC, unsmooth DC. And now I'm going to have to try and squish that round to get it roughly into the same position. Oops, quite finickety to solder. So let's see if I can just squish this round a bit to bring it roughly into the same sort of rough area. Yeah, that should be about right. So now this one is going to still not draw quite as much. It's, they're both going to be passing the same current because the current is constant throughout the circuit. But this is going to even the score a bit for the LEDs. Good day, okay. I think the LEDs may have it. Oh, quite significantly, yes. That has uh, made a huge difference. So the answer is that the LEDs quite obviously win in terms of the sheer, that is a, just, it's mammoth the difference in output, and that one is still drawing less current than that neon. So um, now, to finish this off, I think it would be quite interesting you said gingerly unplugging it first, to actually make the little circuit board up that comes with the lamp and actually put this uh, this LED panel 
uh, into this housing and use the proper capacitive dropper with it just to see what those orange LEDs look like. So I'm just going to uh, start, actually, you know, let's just do it right now. So I'll put this out of the way. I'll desolder these leads first. This will be an amusing little project to just build this little circuit board up. So this is uh, one of these typical, you know, this is what you find in these LED lamps. Uh, it's just a, a basic capacitive dropper. So what's the value of capacitor we've got? We've got 470 nanofarad. So uh, let's uh, start by putting, this is the discharge resistor that's crossed the uh, dropper capacitor and they're using a 470K. So I'm going to stick that in there. This is a bit that stops you getting a wee zing when you unplug the lamp and touch the contacts at the end. If you didn't have that resistor in, if you unplug the lamp and touch the lamp, uh, lamp contacts, the lamp would probably glow briefly and you'd get a zing off it. So it's always a good idea to put this in. I will say their choice, the, the lead spacing for that is a wee bit close-ish. Uh, solder, there's the solder. Again, you'll hear the solder iron humming in the background as it kicks in and out, heating the, the element. So that's that in. Let's put all the low level, low components first. So this is a uh, red, black, yellow. So that's two, zero, uh, and four zeros. So it's 200k resistor. And this one is partly to do with. Uh, 200k. It's uh, to do with discharging this capacitor, the electrolytic capacitor, uh, so the lamp goes off decisively, and also it's to uh, shunt any leakage, it's so you don't get that situation that you've got the lamp in a lamp holder and you turn the light off at the wall and it still just keeps glowing due to capacitive coupling between the switch wires, which is a common effect. I quite like it personally. It's quite nice, just that little extra sort of almost like free glow because that electricity would have just been fundamentally wasted otherwise, although it is capacitive, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, diodes. Are these 1N4007? I should think that, yes, they are 1N4007. A generic 1-amp diode rated for 1,000 volts. Probably one of the most common diodes. So I've got four of those to make up a bridge rectifier. Did you hear the voice soften there? That's because I'm just starting to enjoy this. I love building stuff. Or should I say, enjoy it more. It's when you get right into the mood. So that's it. The four diodes in for the bridge. These kits, they're, they're cheap, they're about 99 cents or, or something like that, or 99 pence from eBay, and it's just a DIY LED lamp kit. Um, some of them come with the LEDs, a bit more expensive than the ones with the LEDs, although goodness knows why, because um, you can buy the lamps for about 99 pence complete. You could buy a lamp, you could desolder all the LEDs, that would just be a delight. For those of you noting the, the ease with which I solder with just uh, holding the circuit board and the solder and the components in one hand, as I've said before, if the more you solder, you'll suddenly, it'll just all make sense. It'll all, you'll just end up doing it out of necessity. Cheap generic Chinese snips being used this time. I could use my special Xeron snips, but I'll just use these ones this time, just because they're handy. Uh, capacitor. This is the smoothing capacitor. This is the bit that goes boom if I put it in the wrong way around, so let's not put it in the wrong way around. Uh, the positive has to go over that way, so I'll put that there. Fold the leads down. This is a bit that theoretically smooths it. It doesn't usually smooth it completely. You still end up with a slight shimmer, but it's certainly better than just the, the unsmooth supply. And it's nice that in this instance they have used a 400 volt one, which means that if you have a little mishap and your circuit board uh, doesn't, the LEDs don't light up initially because you've got an open circuit or a bad solder joint, it means that capacitor won't vent as they sometimes do. 
Then we'll add the capacitor itself. Now this one, I think I could just angle it across like that, just for neatness, just like they would in the Chinese factories. So this capacitor uh, lets a little portion of current through in each half wave of the main cycle. That's how the capacitive dropper works. The software I'm trying out at the moment is Yamada. And I have to say, it's uh, Kems who mentioned it, and it's okay, but it's very quirky. I tend to use the uh, iPad in sort of portrait format. And uh, half the, all the advertising and all the controls are vertical to me as I'm looking at it now, but the actual recording time, which is at 10.44, uh, 10 minutes, 47 seconds now, uh, is all um, pointing down that way. And yet the actual, the controls, like the flash, are actually pointing this way. It's very, it's kind of odd, very odd. Um, what do I need now? I've got a resistor, which, uh, now is this the inrush limiting resistor, or is this a... Uh, this is going between the uh, capacitor and the LEDs. I would have chosen, this is a 10 ohm resistor, brown, black, black. I would have chosen a higher value than that. I could choose a higher volume. I could just put a, a 100 ohm would uh, still not drop too much. Uh, I'm going to put in a 100 ohm right now. One moment. The current isn't huge, so I could just use a quarter watt resistor in there. So that's what I'll do. Because it is, I see, it's just going out to the LEDs. Uh, between the capacitor. So let's pop that resistor in. That resistor there is more the capacitor, the resistor that I'd normally expect on the incoming side before the bridge rectifier. It's almost like there's been a slight design burp, uh, or you know, it's been sort of a design has been copied and they didn't really 100% know what the vault that uh, component was for. So that's that in. And that just leaves these little tails. So this is the uh, LED negative. Goes in there. Quite short. They've stripped it, but it is they've stripped and tinned it, which is quite nice. Still quite short though. And uh, the positive goes in here. And the negative is going straight up to the capacitor, and the positive is going via that 100 ohm resistor I've just put in. The fact is 100 ohm should maybe just soften the ripple a little bit as well. Keep popping that wire out, it's a wee bit footery. Footery, a Scottish word. I think it's F O O. T E R Y footery, fumbly, just small and detailed and quite, quite tricky. Right, so let's uh, put this on. I'm just thinking. This is the point. I plug it in. There's a massive bang, and every single LED just detaches in the front of the circuit board, which would be quite amusing in its own right. So there's the negative pad on the PCB. He said melting the one next to it as well. And there's the positive pad on the PCB. Basically the start of the series run of the LEDs. And that just leaves the uh, base, which has the two wires going in. And they're basically, uh, one of them's going straight to the bridge rectifier. And one of them is going via the capacitor to the other end of the input to the bridge rectifier. So uh, let's uh, solder these in, and that will be theoretically, all I have to do is click it together, plug it in, and it will burst into either life or flames, depending on how, uh, how I've done it here. What's the worst that could happen? This will be interesting to see. I've never actually made an orange lamp, I don't think. I've always gone for the exotic colours like whites and blues and greens and stuff like that. So let's crop those down. Uh, let's just do, do it Chinese style and just... 
Oh no, I should really, I should actually put some insulation in that, shouldn't I? I could have put a bit of heat shrink over it. Heat shrink would work quite well, or do I just do what the Chinese do and stuff it in? Let's just do what the Chinese do and stuff it in, because like, they're pros at this thing. So uh, now, uh, I just have to clip this cover on, and that should be, oh that's good, oh I should recall this, that's quite tight covers, there we go. Right, let's bring a, let's uh, also get the power tester in and see what it uh, thinks of it. So here's a socket, here's the power meter, uh, actually you know, let's plug it in without the power meter first in case it goes bang. Don't want to blow my power meter up. So I'm going to use this, actually I could use the, the pink uh, tester, but I'll use this. This is uh, looking quite nice. Slight shimmer, not that bad. Looks terrible on the iPad, but that's okay. So let's uh, plug it in and see what it thinks power-wise. This is maybe not the best idea. It thinks 1.2 watts, uh, and it's showing a current of about 33 milliamps, but there's two sets in parallel, so it's about 15 milliamps per LED, which isn't actually too bad. So how's this going to look if I turn the light off? It's, oh, that's quite nice. It's very neony. That's a lovely orange. It's very neat. Also, it projects a slight pattern out as well because of the number of LEDs. That is quite nice. Ferocious. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Um, so, quite tempted to actually make more of them now. So yes, uh, the neons, uh, the neon wins for size and simplicity. All you need with a neon is one resistor to actually run it directly from the mains. Technically speaking, with these LEDs, I could have made a much simpler power supply by using the existing bridge rectifier I had on it and just a couple of resistors, 100k resistors, that would have run it at a very low level. But the capacitive dropper means that uh, without any warmth at all, it, it, it puts out a lot more light. But... Um, so I'd say that uh, ultimately the LEDs are much more efficient than the neon indicators, but of course the, the neon indicator, you can't beat it for that simplicity of just one resistor. And the lamp is a nice bonus.